you've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Posture Screen, Imaging Services, Zingit Solutions, Cairo Moguls, Five Star Management, Cairo Health USA, Local Gold, Rhino Coaching, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Thin, Peter Goldman Zone School of Healing, Go Get Talks, Fit to Lift, The Goodman Factor, Unmarket Your Practice, and McCaffrey Clinical Mentoring. Let's hustle. Hey guys, Jim Chester coming to you live today. I am in the Mile High City. This is Denver, Colorado. And uh, what I hear is uh, it's coming down the pike is that um, this your freedom, our freedom, my freedom is coming here next. And we have some hot topics that we're going to be discussing today on this Cairo Hustle live stream, which is an afternoon edition. And I have Dr. Wade Anison coming in from Madison, Wisconsin, which they call Mad Town, and they should be mad. And uh, I'm coming in from the Mile High City, and we're at altitude, and sometimes that messes with your blood levels, and it can sometimes mess with your uh, your altitude sickness. But um, I, I, I know that there's a lot that we need to discuss today. And one of those main topics that we want to discuss is um, our freedoms um, as Americans. And this isn't such an easy topic for me to talk about because during our pre-chat, I was getting a little bit, um, I was like, yeah, you know, sometimes when I think about this, like the, the hair on my arm stands up or, and I, I don't know really how to process these feelings around it. And I said, well, when are we going to like make the decision that it's now? When is it going to be today? When do are we going to assemble together and say that our voice um, can't be disregarded anymore? So I just want to welcome you to the live stream and uh, we'll get you to uh, share some ideas around what's happening in your camp um, up in Wisconsin, because I know that we have a problem in California. We have a problem in New York. Maine is uh, becoming an issue. New Jersey today, I've been watching a high wire with Dell Bigtree and I've been watching some of the uh, stop the mandatory vaccination movement and seeing what's happening inside of that place and how um, unjust um, not having our voices heard it's becoming. So what's happening up there in Madtown? Well, thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. And uh, first of all, I just want to acknowledge you and appreciate everything you do, both from uh, a patient perspective, because A, you are one, number one, you're also a chiropractic advocate, but I think the fact that you're so passionate about helping patients get access to uh, drug-free care is something that your heart is just giant. So thank you for all you're doing there. Um, yeah, Wisconsin is going through what uh, is being really bulldozed through right now in New Jersey, which is actually a, an unconstitutional farce as to what's happening to uh, society. So what's what's the discussion today isn't even vaccine. Some of you are going to argue that the discussion is not vaccine. It's actually human rights. It's constitutional baseline, fundamental human rights as to your choice of what gets put in. But right now, big pharma is grasping control and they are literally forcing themselves into the position that gets to decide what goes in, not only your child's body, but you as an adult. And I think that's where people with complacency are struggling to see the big picture here. Do I think the sky is falling? No, I don't. I don't think the sky is falling at all. I think the present time consciousness is you better get off your bottom and you better stand up and let your legislators know how you feel about health. And the reason is it's being taken away without under the guise of protecting the public, which again is under the guise of pharmaceutical research that is tainted to whose side do you think the pharmaceutical benefit and so all the information being portrayed through that public health department is out of fear is out of misinformation otherwise known as myth information which is not a lisp uh in that we need to discern and and become educated as to that so the people that are standing up are actually well informed and educated the ones that aren't saying anything are falling prey to the to the dogma that remains around the whole issue, whether it's anti-vax or pro-vax. It isn't either. It's personal fundamental rights. As the as a co-legislative chair in Wisconsin for the Chiropractic S Society of Wisconsin, 
um, and now I'm the incoming president, is that I literally have had to been at the Capitol over the last three years for various things. Were we offline or we, is it just you that was off? Um, I, there's just a glitch on my end. Okay, cool. We're good. So anyway, that all the testimony and it's, it's really coming to a head. So it's not like I'm seeking involvement with this as much as it's a default as to where we are in the environment. So I'm not crazy about having to do it at all. In fact, I have a busy practice, but I'm here to represent not only my patients, but my own human rights as well as yours. And it's like, it's actually ridiculous, Jim, as you know, that we're having to have this conversation and that big farm and the government can actually force this into your body with no say and yet, yet no accountability on the other side. You know, as I got more integrated into chiropractic, I heard chiropractors say, this isn't a chiropractic problem. This isn't for chiropractors to put their head into. And as I started to read into what was happening, I started to realize that it's not just a chiropractor thing. It's an everyone thing. And like you said, what's going to happen next? Am I going to be able to get on an airplane without being fully vaccinated as an adult? Am I going to be able to go to the grocery store, go to the health club? And we're telling like the most fundamental thing, like kids can't go to school. Yeah. Like when you start messing with like the kids, then they start messing with the elderly. And now we have the elderly and we have the kids who don't have high discernment or decision-making skills. Yeah. And now we put people in fear. So the byproduct of that again is, is seizing control, but most people, the majority of the population, roughly 48% from a behavioral analysis perspective, 48% of the population is roughly amiable. What does that mean? It means like they don't like confrontation. They're not going to seek it out. They're going to avoid it, which means they won't stand up. They don't want to be noticed. They want to kind of just skirt the edges of issues. And that's not a bad thing. That's like the introvert extrovert. But even though it, it's a little more than just introverted and extroverted. And so when we look at it from a behavioral perspective, that's a big chunk of the population that won't speak out. And that they're relying in many cases on, on us, you and I, to be able to do that. But at the same time, you brought up an earlier issue when we were talking, and that's what's sad about what's happening, not only in Wisconsin. We've seen it with our local county boards and the Board of Health. And what they're doing is from that side of the perspective, and I won't mention specific parties involved because it isn't just partisan, but there's a heavy partisan effort. And... Um, if that slipped out today, well, then it slipped out. But the bottom line is that this push in this aggressive move is very timely around this impeachment effort for the president. And that the timing of the push to actually mandate force vaccination on everyone in the population and taking human rights away is actually cr creating a buzz in terms of they're trying to, to tip the scale so that they can present a hearing in Wisconsin. That's the agenda, which means all of the outcry and the volume of folks, literally hundreds showing up at these county board meetings where they're tabling it and then they're taking it off. And some are just voting through it with all this testimony. And I mean, like, there's nobody that shows up to these county board meetings on a regular basis, maybe two to five to seven special interests at times of something coming up, whether it be land or whatnot. Um, annexations and th certain things that are going on within the county. Well, now this public health issue is coming up with rights and our Wisconsin United for Freedom is incredibly involved. And they are a bunch of parents that are educated and informed, not just women, but also men, but it's weighted towards moms that have had vaccine reactions and care about what goes in their kids. And they're super bright, super intelligent, and they're presenting very uh, respectfully and very considerate to this board factual information, which is not being heard, Jim, as you know, it is not being listened to. They're literally forcing their agenda regardless of the testimony. And that agenda comes from higher up. So it's really clear what's happening. And that's the sad state is that the people that put them in office, they're not being listened to. They're not being heard. And as I start listening to you more, 
what you said is adverse reactions to a vaccine. Well, an adverse reaction, reaction to, to vaccine, in my opinion, from what, after listening to all these moms, is it's called a vaccine injury. And when you start telling people that they don't have a choice between what they do and what they do, they don't do. Now you're controlling the household. And I didn't know that that was an American thing. <laughs> and yeah, you did. It's not an American thing. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and, and, and the trickle down effect is, is now they tell you what you're going to do. And now they're going to come and take your freedom. So, so the ramifications look like this. And Dr. Liam Schubel just kind of uh, alluded to this the, the other day when he and I spoke because it was two days after he had experienced what he experienced in New Jersey. I'll put a link to that video there as well, that interview, because it's pretty profound. And then they basically said, he pulls in there and parks and said, as he's walking towards the door, are you a doctor? He says, yes, yes, I am. He goes, okay, come with me, VIP towards the room. And then they ask him at the room, are you a doctor? He goes, yeah, this guy's a doctor. Great. Come on in here. So what is he, what is he around? Now he's passed thousands of people outside the doors that have sat there from eight 30 with their kids in 30 degree temperatures all day. This is late afternoon. And now he walks in and now he's in with a bunch of doctors. But again, they didn't ask him what type of doctor he was. So literally they're coaching him and they think he's a pediatrician or an MD and they're coaching them on, on what to say and how to strike the emotions. So it comes time. And if you've ever testified legislatively, they give you a ballot form and they basically say, are you voting yay or nay to the proposed bill and who, who you are, what you represent, if it's a group, and then whether you're yay or nay. Well, at that point, he realized once they see that I say no, uh, in this case, against the removal of the exemption, they're going to the gigs up. So he literally stepped out of the room from that point. And then he was also not allowed to get into the actual room because that was full. And then next thing you know, through divine intervention, as this whole process was, the door opens, the sheriff lets him in and he sees some, uh, he sees a couple docs, the Warners, for example, and said, oh, he's, you got to get him in. So boom, they let him in and now he's in there. He didn't get a chance to testify with the hundreds of folks that were already on list. But again, nobody listened to those testimonies from a critical eye or, hey, let's get the data and we'll decide based on the data. They're, the data is irrelevant because the decision is made. The agenda is clear. They're pushing it through. It, it's, it's, it's just it, it's an abomination on our human rights. And unfortunately, it, it's, it requires everyone to take action. It requires people to wake up and realize that the smoke and mirror Yes, I'm back. All right, how you doing? Well, I had a, I don't know if people want this this message to go through. So uh, apparently, well, so there's probably people out there that are watching that are like, well, they're talking about that big V word, and they're talking about freedom, and they're talking about what it matters to have American residency. So. I didn't catch what that last bit that you said, okay. but as, as, as an educated man, I'm like, well, if Liam Schubel is at an event and he's standing up for the rights of America, then we all should pay attention. Yep. We need help in Wisconsin. They really need help in New Jersey. Every state is next. So it's not a matter of, oh, it's not happening to us. Oh, yes, it is. It's just starting on the West and East Coast and it's working its way inward. And that's where the major change starts. So people, you have to wake up and not because the sky is falling. It's because someone's stealing from you. Literally, they're stealing from you right now. Your right to have health. I mean, literally to have health. Jim, you and I both know the neurotoxic damage and destruction that that causes when you force vaccines, that we have what's called genetic variability, which means our ability to process even a carrot or food, sulfur, high sulfur vegetables is different than someone who can't methylate that sulfur out. Someone who's celiac and cannot even come close to gluten and physically contact slash get it in their system 
versus someone who can without that reaction. That autoimmune response is clearly there, but every person doesn't have that response. Many do, some don't, some won't, they'll have delayed responses. But the reality is there is damage, there is destruction from it and they know it, but yet they're not removing that from the vaccines, which is why it's not an anti-vaccine campaign. It is a, why don't you clean them up, make them safe if you're gonna force them in or actually don't force them in and accept that there's accountability and then take that risk. If you really wanna force them in our bodies, then give us some get some get us some recourse as to your accountability. How fair is that? Well, as a country, I know our health scores is very low. So to say that we're going to do this, we're basically saying that the health score doesn't matter of the individual, and if we're already failing. This doesn't do anything to make it better because we have heart disease, we have cancer, we have autoimmune diseases. And I listened to a dad earlier. He had his little girl in his arms and he said that I'm a fully vaccinated human and I have respiratory issues. I have this condition. I have this condition. Would I have these things? if I didn't go through and become vaccinated. No one really can stay because there's no debate. It's just a, like you said, a bulldozer approach. And it's pushing people into this defense and fear. When I was out at the Genesis Pediatric Conference out in New Jersey this summer, or maybe it was really fall, what I realized is that there's a family there and the family was afraid because now they're being looked at in their neighborhood for not vaccinating their kids. People will not let their kids play with their kids. And they don't want to tell people what their position is. So what's happening now is we get these little micro pockets of fear. And people are afraid to like Take their kids to the park. Like, what happened if the, the, the Smiths see me and my kids are at the park? You've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Posture Screen, Imaging Services, Zinga Solutions, Cairo Moguls, Five Star Management. Cairo Health USA, Local Gold, Rhino Coaching, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Thin, Peter Goldman Zone School of Healing, Go Get Talks, Fit to Lift, The Goodman Factor, Unmarket Your Practice, and McCaffrey Clinical Mentoring. Let's hustle. The sensationalism, there's a couple problems with, with this, and you, you bring up a very good point, Jim, is that the sensationalism that goes on, which, which in, in, in another word is, or another phrase is basically the media using it for propaganda to leverage a viewpoint. And when you create a fear of chicken pox as though it's a nasty disease, I don't know about you as a kid, I'm still here, by the way, I'm still here. And we used to have chicken pox parties. Why, right? Why? I've got family members, actually my in-laws, who are not vaccinated and guess what? They're still alive. And you wonder and go, well, wait. Well, first of all, their immune system is functioning with all this histo histological and this experience that it's gained over time, which you and I both know is traction in terms of the immune system recognizing pathogens and already having antibodies for them in dealing with it. The problem is as an adult, this woman being 72, my, 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 uh, my in-law, basically she would have to be caught up as an adult, we, we alluded to it earlier, with whatever vaccines, in this case, 69 vaccines to catch up, right? To be able to travel potentially across borders, whether it be out of the US, into the US, out of the state she's in, or into the next state she's in. 
And so if she wants to, that's what we're talking about is where this goes in terms of our IDs now being connected with our medical records and the overreaching boundary that pharma and government's having on your information to bring you in line with a vaccine that again, creates more risk. So when you generate fear in your neighborhood and as to, first of all, what's my experience? I'm a holistic chiropractor who's practiced for 26 years. I've been a patient for 47. I started with ear infections when I was two. My mom took me to a chiropractor. I had pneumonia when I was five. Took me to the chiropractor first. Those weren't the days you take your kid to the chiropractor and tell your MD. She did it. He adjusted me. He said, I think he has pneumonia. Literally diagnosed me. Sent me and said, he needs to see, take him to the emergency room. I think he has pneumonia. My mom said, hey, wait, can't we just wait? He always responds well from an adjustment. He said, no, I think you just need to go have him checked out. I believe he has pneumonia. I was wiped. So sure enough, not even eight blocks away was our hospital in my hometown. Took me there. Sure enough, they diagnosed me with pneumonia, put me in an oxygen tent. And within two and a half hours, I was bouncing off the walls as a little hyperactive little kid, but literally like, boom, I turned the corner and I was back up going. That was not explainable by the medical model. They had no idea how I went from really, really sick to two and a half hours later, just from air, oxygen in an oxygen tent, doing what I was doing and the adjustment and what it does. So it literally changed my life. My point for sharing that is the immune response of the body with chiropractic and where we get placed in this grand scheme of things it isn't a quote unquote chiropractic issue, but the avoidance of it, it's because we're talking about something so emotional, like you'd said, it's based on a belief system. So it's not even a debate. You can't get into a conversation because it's like a religion. You either believe that it solves everything that it says, or you don't, and you have questions. And I'm not here to try to change someone's mind, not because I can or don't want to. It's like, I don't need to, but at the same time, I don't expect to because I don't need, need to convert someone to my way of thinking. And so my message for the parents that, A, number one, who are sitting on the fence watching this, your child is not at risk from a non-vaccinated kid. Your child's at risk from the most recent vaccinated kid. I'll repeat it. Your child's at risk from the most recent vaccinated kid. And so when we throw the non-vaccinated kids in there, but don't support the fact that they're not the issue, we're clouding the issue. So the distraction, the distraction in, in the media is that automatically they'll state anti-vaxxer. No, 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 it isn't about anti-vax at all. In fact, it's about everything but vaccination. It's about the fact that big pharma is trying to control through the government what goes into your body without your say anymore period. It doesn't stop at vaccines. When you say that, you tell your story about being a sick kid. And I've heard a lot of stories about sick kids. And I'm the first to tell people that chiropractic works every time. But I'm also the first person to tell people that you should have two doctors in your life. One to keep you healthy, I want to save you from dying. And per our conversation earlier, the real point that hits home is that we should all have a choice of who we see. We should all have choice of how we treat our bodies. We should all have choice of how we take care of our kids. We should all have choice of how we share information. Information is what is freedom. Mm -hmm. So as we are talking also, you know, there's a certain threshold for us as a culture. Like you can tell me I have to go do something, but who's making that policy? So it, this is the big extrapolation of this concept. The MDs don't like the system that they're putting to either. They don't like the big pharmaceutical approach. The chiropractors sure as hell don't like it. But this whole dogmatic approach that chiropractors are against MDs, it's a bunch of malarkey. It's a farce. It's a made up agenda. Because the big pharma doesn't want 
the chiropractor to like the chiropractor, or they don't want the chiropractor to like the MD, because they want there to be this confusion, this state of disillusionment to take our eye off the prize, which is personal freedom. So it's not the MD not liking the chiropractor, or it's not the chiropractor not liking the other chiropractor. It's the control from above that's putting us into the blood fight and saying that you're wrong and I'm right, or you're all wrong, but the person up top is the one controlling the media, and now they're controlling the household, and now they're going to control the schools, and now they're going to control these professionals. Because a lot of MPs and pediatricians, they're probably thinking to themselves, I don't want to make a sicker culture, but I don't want to be blackballed out of my profession because I won't prescribe. And if I don't prescribe, I don't pay my bills and I don't raise my family. But my big point early on was if it's so safe. Let's take all these politicians and put them through this whole schedule and let's document that for about three years and see what their outcomes are. And let's get their kids on a full schedule and see what their outcome is. And then once that's proven to be safe and effective, hey, let's mandate this. But until they're willing to do that and bargain their own soul, then we are playing Russian roulette and we don't know when the bullet's going to fly. And that's a hard thing for these moms that have a neighbor or somebody that's in sorority or someone that works with them that had a little baby and now they don't have it anymore because it's a vaccine injured child. And what the cataclysmic event is, is the downstream is once some baby does get a vaccine injury, 50% of those families divorce. So there's no more family unit. And here's the next thing. When someone does become vaccine injured, guess what they don't do? Reproduce. So we're making a sterilized population. Yeah, that's that part of it's arguably, not, it's not population, arguably part of population control that's behind the big scene of this because it isn't logical. This is not logical, no matter what they say. The fact that they ignore any other information than what pharma is telling them, that's it, done. I mean, how logical is that for anyone to make a decision from one side of the story, from the side that benefits the most from that story? That's not logical. That No business decides like that. Well, wait. We're taking the 1% doctors, the doctors, and we're pushing them to fight against each other. We're yeah. taking the most edu educated group of people in our country, in the world, and we're saying you guys should fight. Yep. You and guys I, are. I would, each other. I'll, I'll state this as part of a, a qualification too. For those that think, just 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 a reiteration, to those that think this is anti-vax, it is clearly not. I have never given the position to not vaccinate to a family or a child that I take care of. I take care of injured. I've got several injured, and over the years, I don't know how many, um, injured kids from vaccines. And the repeating story is that VAERS exists, but only 1% or less than 1% are actually reported through VAERS because we've had conversation with medical doctors off the record because they can't go on the record or they, the, they won't go on the record, but they clearly state it is suicidal for them to actually report to VAERS because it affects their livelihood and their, their job. They are going to be recognized and acknowledged negatively for that move, number two. So if 99% of the population or 99% of those vaccinated are not having reported, that means the numbers they're using to throw at you and say there's no injury or it's minimal, it, it's like reporting a fraction of the lightning strikes or plane crashes. It's just saying, oh, we're only counting this silver plane with red stripes versus the whole industry. 
Now you've changed the criterion with which we report. Therefore, you're getting skewed data. Again, weighted for who? Weighted on the side of those benefiting the most. So it's just illogical, that whole process. And it's unfounded. So A, I appreciate you having this discussion. B, it's about human rights and not that that other word starting with V that the media is trying to censor through. And the last thing I would just say is look in your area, try to find your legislators, your local government, get active from the standpoint of just telling them. You don't have to have all the science behind your belt, but if you want to know it, research it. National Vaccine Information Center, Wisconsin United for Freedom, WUF. They are an organization that's happy to share across borders information as to factual data. Uh, one of my recent uh, interviews was with a researcher that works for NVIC. She's the researching nurse, tremendous individual, very knowledgeable, factual, has the data, has an injured child. I even saw today where there was a school nurse that stood up and, and took the microphone and said, I'm not allowed to send this paperwork through when somebody doesn't want to vaccinate their kids. Like, she's like, we have people that are Muslim, we have people that are Jewish that do not want to vaccinate their kids. And now they're being sent home and I'm being told not to send any paperwork. Mind blowing. It doesn't make and sense, I, it's illogical. It only makes sense from the standpoint of, it's it's just it's population control whatever it might be it's it's not a logical q and a um let's look at the data and make a decision from there not at all there's no studies that exist on efficacy and effectiveness good luck go at them if you're if you're truly analytical and you're watching this and you really don't buy it go look for that research it does not exist never and if it did exist it wouldn't be under anyways Talk to, grab the pay, grab the parents. By the way, last figures, 1%, still right around 1% to 1.2% of the population, according, whether it's just in Wisconsin or nationally, I'm not sure, but at least I believe in Wisconsin is still 100% not vaccinated. That number hasn't changed. So it's not like there's this outbreak or this new problem. And less than 5%, I think it's right around 3 or 4%, I may be off a bit there, but literally minimal, single digit for sure, is only partially not vaccinated. And so this massive push is almost, it's like it, they want to they wanna grab it under control before it even becomes an issue. But I mean, we're talking such small numbers yet that there's no major trending. It's just the question. And they just want the question to be ignored from now on. The question is, should I or shouldn't I, and are they safe? They don't want any questions, no more. No questions. No questions out of you, Jim Chester, no more. <laughs> it's like, really? Don't you dare. I had a chat with a friend of mine yesterday and she's like, you wanna have kids? I go, yeah. She goes, it's gonna be a scary future. Yeah, it's true. Not, and not, not, not to think so negative, just think about it before you do it. Just know what you're doing, know what you're getting into. We, we need, we need tomorrow. We need great, smart kids. We need, man, um, the interviewing, interview the kids and the families that aren't vaccinated and you, you talk to parents and this is an, a resounding theme and it's a theme in my office as well. Those who aren't versus those who are fully and even partially vaccinated, those who aren't have markedly better health, better immune responses. They get sick less. If they do, it's quick and over. But you know what? They're not dependent on drugs and meds. They don't see that medical doctor that often. So guess what? Guess who's out those dollars? Do they want society to be independent and empowered? I don't know. I mean, I do. Earlier but... on, you congratulated me for my work that I do. One of the things I'm going to say that I tell people when I'm doing the work is if I don't tell you the truth about chiropractic today, one day someone will mislead you with drugs or surgery. It's good. That's powerful. 
And that's a personal freedom. And when we talk about this, there is no choice. Yeah, right. That's on, something brother. to think about. Yeah. I might not be able to say that one day. Well, you may not have an audience to be able to to speak your freedom your free thoughts to because the, of censorship, which is happening in a number of ways already. So this message will already be dampened based on its it's just it's the way it is. So it's happening on Google and it's happening on Facebook. Yep. Because so they know so that's where the people are. Yeah, right. Well, thanks for having me, Jim. Um, is there anything else I can do for you? No, let's just stay in touch. And as things start to move forward for both of us, let's get on another one. You got it. Um, for those of you who, again, are in Wisconsin and see this, Wisconsin, Uni Wisconsin United for Freedom, I'll send Jim the link, uh, as well as nvic.org, which is National Vaccine Information Center. Educate yourself, understand more of the facts. If you want, if you talk to your legislators, don't feel like you have to have all the answers. You could simply say, I am against my rights being taken away. Thank you. Stand up for our rights, period. And that's it. You don't have to be scientific. You don't have, you can just share what's in your heart. Please don't make my kids not be able to go to school because I choose to raise healthy kids. It can be as simple as that. So anyway, well, if I can get any help, um, I'll help you any way I can, Jim. Well, I'll go ahead and thank everybody for being on today. If you guys found some value in this, hashtag value. If you're watching this on replay, hashtag replay. And if you think that this is something that more people need to hear, hit the share button right now. And I'm going to close out here from Denver, Colorado and say you guys are just one store away. Keep hustling. See you guys on the next one. Thank you for listening to Cairo Hustle Live. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.